Well, hello and welcome to Camilla and I. And uh, yeah, we've got a surprise here because um, last time I was here with Stuart James, just doing a general chit chat on photography in general and wildlife, there was uh, one chap, one one guy's name kept appearing, Nick. And uh, even at the end of the video, I said, "Is Nick there?" And uh, Anyway, lo and behold, today, while filming my 300mm initial impressions video, which you should have watched by now, we've actually got Nick. <laughs> Finally made it. <laughs> Nick, is, Nick is not there. Nick is here. <laughs> so, Stuart, yeah, we, 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 caught up with, we caught up with Nick. So, uh, yeah, well, we thought we'll have a little general chat as well, I suppose, about... Um, what gear yeah. are we using? Well, As again, fellow Sony users. Yeah, Sony A1 mm -hmm. and the 200 to 600. I've also got the RX10 Mark IV in my bag. Um, you just have to, if you follow Stuart James, yeah. you have to have an RX10. I haven't got an Yeah, RX10 Stuart RX10. converted me. <laughs> um, I did use this a few times and I was very impressed with it for lightness and travel and everything. Um, and it does produce some good images. Um, but yeah, I've got the A1 um, after a long slog of having about eight or nine different cameras in the last five years um but yeah this is an absolute beast yeah yeah it it really does the trick the sony a1 um i mean the a93 obviously um probably supersedes it on a couple of issues but you've still got the 50 megapixels and the ability to crop which as we all know in wildlife topic is you need, so yeah. important so important cropping but um but you've come on quite a journey to get there. Yeah, um, it started about five years ago. Um, wasn't into photography at all, but I used to do a lot of cruises with my family and me mum was diagnosed with cancer. Um, mm. And we thought, let's take her on a cruise. So I wanted something to keep the memories there. Mm. Um, so I went to London Camera and I bought uh, a Nikon D3500 with a kit lens. Mm. Um, took that on holiday, got some reasonable shots, mm. which we're all happy with. Mm. Um, and then I decided to go out with it onto a park run down Southampton and I felt that I wanted to carry this further so I went back to London Camera Exchange upgraded to geez, <laughs> upgraded to the D7200 and as you know you go and buy lenses etc then my my best model that I had at the time then went to a D500 because I wanted to get into wildlife photography yeah um, the d500 for quite brilliant. a while and i had the mm. 200 to 500 mm. um yep. brilliant lens yeah i had that unfortunately i dropped it in the sea when i was doing a time lapse uh. long story but i won't go there um so i got the insurance money on that mm. and then i went to the sony a9 brilliant yeah um, so first I. mirrorless camera i had mm. absolutely fantastic mm -hmm. um started building the lenses up and then I went to the, I bought an A7R 3 because I wanted the resolution. Absolutely amazed with that. But then, as you know, Sony bring out more and more cameras and equipment. Then I opted for the A1 and I haven't turned back since. But obviously I've got the RX10 Mark IV, but that's just for, just to carry around and take snaps when I just can't be bothered to carry this about. But yeah, so that's what got me into photography. And I often go out with Stuart, I'm on some of his videos, mm. I go out with mm. a few friends, Paul and Clive, do mm. some wildlife or street, so I'm, I'm into pretty much everything at the moment, mm. but yeah. Yeah, no, he's on mine now, Stuart. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the 300. The 300. <laughs> yeah, we're on the 300, so uh, yeah, you can't borrow this one. It's, gl it's glued to this camera, I tell you, there you, well, you can if you want, you can have a go. Yeah. But it is, a, it is a, yeah, quite a beast. As, um, yeah, if you've seen the review, uh, well, the initial the initial thoughts, it is quite amazing. And uh, so initial thoughts were, the, the summary of that was basically, I didn't think I needed the 300 f2.8, um, but I did because Jonathan Hodgewitz convinced me mm. uh, of travel, safari, lightweight nature, getting to um, 600 millimeter in a six and a half pound package, um, f5.6 still 90% as quick of focusing as the um, so you've got F2. the teleconverter on there now have you? the teleconverter's yeah. on there now um, so I'm at 600 now f5.6 um, I've tried it at um, 
420 with a 1.4 mm. and of course uh, wide open f2.8 300 mil is blazingly yeah, fast yeah, and is, it, is. it blow virtually anything out of the water i think the only thing quicker than this is probably the 135 which um stuart's got yeah so yeah. um that's probably the only thing that's faster than this lens absolutely amazing mm. And uh, the 7200 f2.8 is pretty quick as well. I've got but that, that, yeah. That is a zoom. And I've used that with right. a two times converter. I've got the Mark II version. Excellent. And don't have any problems. The focus not. and speed is still the same. The, the image quality, mm -hmm. you, you do lose a bit, but not a great deal. Nothing to worry about. Mm -hmm. um, I've never tried the 1.4, um, mm -hmm. but I have tried the two times on this, and it's no, it just doesn't play ball very the light goes and everything. You can just about get away with the 1.4 yeah. on the 200 600, but that takes you to an F9, F9. I think. Yeah, I think it is F8 yeah, or F9, F9, yeah. F8, F9 uh, from 6.3. So but with the, the two end. times, it's F11, I think it is. Yeah, yeah. And yeah that's just... F11. That's... It's okay if you're in America. <laughs> yeah, this is <laughs> Where you've got yeah. the light, but yeah. here. Oh, the sun's come out. Yeah, no, this happened on... I know, the... I bring the sun everywhere I go. <laughs> <laughs> this happened on uh, Stuart and mine's uh, video. Yeah, the sun came out here at uh, Fish Lake Meadows. It's very so nice it's here, isn't it? Literally only 15 minutes away, so... Um, For me, yeah, I only live down the road, so 10, yeah. 15 minutes. Yeah. I've been here a few times, but um, every time I come, it's always in the winter, because it's somewhere to go when there's nothing else to do. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's, it, it is very nice down here. Mm. Yeah, we've got a flock of uh, gadwells in front, so... Uh, Perhaps I'd better show you the, uh, the scenery. Um, let's have a quick look around. Um, let's have a look, see if we can look through that. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, you can get the view Nick and I are getting. I'll just swing you around slowly. The view through the uh, blind window. Yeah, lovely again here at Fish Lake Meadows. And there's uh, yeah, a whole flock of gadwell, must be oh, 15, 20 gadwell ducks out there. Absolutely beautiful. Um, yeah. And we're just waiting, hopefully, a swift come down then, but um, hopefully the hobbies will turn up like we did last time on there. Uh, because I didn't get the uh, hobbies last time I was here, because um, we were we were chatting, <laughs> and, uh, and I had the 600 mil really trained on. The well, idea. yeah, you had it set up, I, didn't you? I did have the A6 700 on, but I'm nowhere near as good. I mean, the A6 700 has only been out now for yeah, six months. Stuart, I've, I've seen yeah. a Stuart's because Stuart got one when it came out, and he got the 135 with that. Mm -hmm. And um, Stuart was obsessed an... with swans, by the way. I know, <laughs> I know. He was very pleased. He was very easy to please. I didn't have to show him a hobby. He was, oh, he was very happy with a. Uh, oh, helps to turn the camera on. Do you know what? I just had my turn. I thought I was talking. <laughs> It's yeah. always a way, isn't it? That's what it does. You either go out and make a video or you go out and take wildlife. <laughs> you can't do both. Two. We can't multitask it's, like that. <laughs> it, is, uh, it is silly. But um, no, anyway, we've got some nice gadwells and we'll see if we do get the elusive uh, hobby. Somebody got a really close shot last weekend um, in the afternoon. I was here in the morning. But the sun came out in the afternoon and uh, somebody had a hobby fly literally over their head, which was beautiful. Wow. That's... Uh, as always, right place, right time. And uh, yeah, we were in the right place, right time to meet Nick this morning. Yeah. <laughs> Stuart. Yeah, 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 yeah Stuart. I, I was Why hoping. Did you invite him last week? <laughs> <laughs> no, he, he, no. He, he, he asked if I was available and I had to do something. So. Oh, yeah, no, and he did, then when he I, did say He it. didn't say too much, but then when I saw the video, I was really gutted because it you know, would have come out. Oh, of course. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then I got in touch with Stuart and said, look, really sorry I couldn't make it. And he said, well, there's going to be a next time. So I said, well, definitely mm. I'll come next time. Mm. Um, but as I was saying to Mark this morning, I don't know what it was. I just woke up and I thought, Stuart, the first thing that came into my head was Fish Lake Meadows. So, um, <laughs> OK, right, well, I'm going to Fish Lake Meadows. And as I pulled up in the car park, I had to look twice at the car in there and I thought, that can't be. Mm. And I thought, no, it's too much of a coincidence. There's no way it's Mark's car. So I started walking down towards the hide, and there he was up on the side, 
ready yeah. to go. Photographing a yeah. uh, tree creeper. And, mm. um, and the rest is history, so you say. <laughs> <laughs> now the, uh, no, hopefully, uh, yeah, it would have been the camper van, but I don't think it's going to fit under the two metre height restriction here. Yeah. If you do come to Fish Lake Meadows, do bear in mind that there is a two metre in the car park, but there are other places, that's the common turn, there are other places to um, park in Romsey apparently, so uh, yeah, I will suss that out in future. But uh, yeah, I was uh, spoilt for turns where I was yesterday, so. Uh, oh, was you really? Yeah, absolutely beautiful. Pennington Marshes. Yeah, can't get enough um, Pennington turns. Marshes, and no, I've never been there. Little turn is quite a small one. It's got a fairly good wingspan, mm. but the actual um, little turns are beautiful. They nest there, and uh, the common turns and some sandwich turns as well. Well, I'm like Stuart. I know very little about yeah. birds. I, I just like them because they're a good subject to photograph and they're challenging. Yeah. Um, I think you or Stuart said in the last videos that they are a difficult subject, one of the hardest to mm. to, to to actually photograph. And um, yeah. I like the challenge. And I've got I've had some great shots with things like kingfishers and things like that. So mm. it's always very nice just to come out nice and quiet. Oh, lovely. And you just don't know what you're going to get on the day. You, you just don't know. No, it's um, it is very random nature. It's not like um, not like a football match. You know, two teams are going to be going at it hard and fast. But you could uh, you could stand here all day and get absolutely nothing. But I've got to. Um, get I'm going to have to try and get the best swan shot, aren't I? Oh yeah. So yeah, I can yeah, show yeah, Stuart. <laughs> Yeah, Stuart, that uh, landing shot. I, I that was good. That, was that good. video he done, yeah. yeah. No, I like that. That's one thing I've never used on this A1 is the video. Oh right, yeah. I've never ever um, used it. Stuart's mm, showed me, and he mm. uses it quite a bit, but I've never got round to using video. In fact, I might do one a bit later today. Mm. Yeah, it's well worth. I mean, a lot of people now are getting into uh, the video side, as it's been so mastered. Um, Photos are everywhere on uh, X, Twitter, Instagram. But, yeah, uh, I, I, I don't use Twitter. I use Instagram mm. and um, Flickr, which is where I just store. It's a place to store my images more than anything. Mm -hmm. um, but I just can't keep up with it, you know. I mean, you guys have got YouTube channels, obviously you've got your Facebook media and things like that. Mm. It takes up a lot of time, doesn't it? Oh yes, yeah. Especially no, the video editing side of things. Yeah. No, I'm lucky to have my own uh, business, so I can uh, oh, right. skive off. Oh, lovely. Here and there, but um, you still get certain commitments. The last month been mm. a bit tough. Had uh, far too much on at the uh, the main job. Right. Because uh, obviously wildlife photography doesn't cut the mustard. No. Certainly not local. No. Accessible. No. <laughs> no, that's a problem, isn't it? As uh, Stuart was saying, we don't do this. We do this largely for the fun of it, and um, you know, it's uh, hopefully it's of some help to you out there, and uh, you know, you learn from other people's experiences, like Nick today. Yeah. <laughs> what uh, you know, what they're using, and uh, how they've got to where they got to, and this sort of thing. It's uh, no, it's uh, it's definitely a progression. Mm. You certainly don't want to go straight for the. No. Uh, a1, no. you would be lost no. um, if you hadn't had those. But I mean, most of, yeah, if I didn't have those circumstances, I'd probably still be with, you know, a low end camera or not even a camera at all. Mm. Um, but nowadays, as was mentioned in the previous videos, that, you, you know, for £1,500, you can get a fairly decent setup, which will give you most of your shots that you need. Mm. But if you're into fast action, and you know, darting around birds, etc. Then you are going to need something slightly quicker. But you know, stepping stones. You take your time. Make mm. sure it's something you want to do mm. before you waste any money. Mm. But there is a, there's so many models out there now. Mm. They're all good, to be honest. Oh, yeah, you're spoilt for these days. You are. I think if if I was going to start again, I would probably start in the Canon mm. ecosystem. Yeah. Um, but I've never owned a Canon camera or no. used a ca no. camera. So no. I don't know what, what leap of faith I've got there, but um, basically I think it's because there's a, a very good beginner to advanced progression yeah. with their system. 
So I think it's slightly better. Um, for... Yeah, because it was mainly just so um, Canon and Nikon, wasn't it? Going oh, back about five, six, yeah. seven years or so, probably mm. longer than that. Mm. And then all of a sudden Sony come out, mm. Fuji was in the background, and and they're all competing for this fast frame rate, high megapixels, mm. um, AI uh, yeah. intelligence and things. Mm. A couple of Stuart Swans. Yeah, I'm going to... have to take those for you, Stuart. Yeah, I'll... Uh, no. Stuart's not there. No. Yeah. I do, they pose quite nicely next to the irises. They're very graceful, aren't they? Not the big daffodils. That's where you decided. Oh, a load of them. Yeah, a whole load of tufted duck just flew in then. Don't know what we got. Let's have a look. Um, blurred image, no doubt. The thing is with these swans, yeah. you can take the shot and then you can darken the foreground and background and make them really pop out. Mm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, a bit of backlight here, obviously, um, mm. with the sun behind. But you do get an interesting... Uh, you can get something quite amazing backlit. I mean, it's cloudy at the moment, so it's holding the sun back a bit. Yeah. Oh, we've got a uh, damsel flight. Yeah, I've seen them popping as one here as well. The thing I haven't tested yet, as I say, with full review coming on the 300, I haven't tested the um, close focus nature of it at all. Yet, really. What, on the Yeah, see how close, yeah. I think it's about two metres. So it's the same which, as this um, then, isn't that really, I think? Yeah. Um, but, um, what's that, a 2.8? Yeah, 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 300, 2.8. So uh, again, even more shallow depth of field, but often um, you well, don't. Nice. Um, often you don't. You don't use the uh, wide open f two point eight either because you've got too much light, and you um, you have to go on an f four or something like that, f five point six. So how anyway. much? How much was that lens? Oh, this one, um, five thousand eight hundred. <laughs> So nearly as much. Well, as the that's camera. not bad, really, is it? I know it is because it's a single fixed lens, but mm. uh, what's your image? Are you happy with the image quality, obviously? Oh yeah, yeah. delighted so far. Yeah, yeah I've, I've printed a couple out already. I must yeah. admit, I couldn't resist Good, printing yeah. a couple out. One of um, one of an Avocet landing, and uh, another one of uh, a red shank calling on a post, and uh, yeah, both of those. Well, I mean, anybody would be very happy with those, right. those photographs. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's, it's, I know it's £5,000. Um, to some people, that's probably impossible. But to a majority, if you're going to spend mm. 6000 on a camera, mm. then they probably would spend that 5000 I mean, with your 600 mm. F4 at 12000 or whatever it is, that this, is... This you is know. a bargain. Yeah, <laughs> it is, yeah. <laughs> Especially with the two times on there. Yeah, with the two times. Yeah. I mean, it's another what? 500 quid, so that's what, 6,300 then for this yeah, combination. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, you have then got a 600 f5.6. Yeah, yeah. And there aren't, there aren't many 600 f5.6 out there. No. Um, you've got the 600 f4. And it's one piece glass, pretty much, you know, rather than the telephone. I tele well, know it's got a load of glass inside, but... Uh, Mm. You've got no telephoto in there. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah coming around like missiles at the moment. Yeah, they um I have to pick them up a bit earlier in flight. The um, you take them from here and then follow them around through this uh, aperture here is probably the best bit. So round out. Yep. Get the direction they're coming in. Get the wind direction. They take off into the wind, so that's always... Yeah, there's, not, there's not too much wind about, is there, really? No. Oh, I thought it was a lot lower this morning. Still got the Gadwells. Still got the Swifts. That's what, uh, that's what James kept doing. Oh, no, I'm terrible. I'm, no. I'm so clumsy with him. Don't worry. Uh, no, it's your lens. Yeah, oh, I know. Yeah. No. Yeah, James was talking no, about I'm some terrible. lens abuse, wasn't he? He was, yeah, myself. I'm terrible because as I pull it up, mm -hmm. I don't approve, you know, it's, mm. it's just me. I just can't get it in the hole. These Pardon coating, the pun. Yeah, these coatings are good. <laughs> I recommend this. I've got uh, them at home, actually, funny enough. Because this is my second 200 600, because the first mm. one, mm. Stuart had some issues that he was trying to resolve for people. So that's how I met Stuart. Mm. Um, 
and my lens, my original lens, was spot on with the Sony A7R4. Um, so I went up, met Stuart, done some tests, and we found out that it was... I've got a feeling it was the camera issue rather than the lens. I can't remember exactly. Anyway, cut a long story short, um, I sold my 200 to 600 because I was into portraiture more than anything. And then I missed it. So within a week of selling it, I went out and bought a second one. So uh, I do have the lens copy. coat. I just not put it back on. Just put it back on. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah, no, they are. Um, they're good. Yeah, they, they are quite useful. Yeah. I mean, they're waterproof to a degree. These yes, lenses, yes. but this adds another layer. Well, it's just protection it, more than it anything. But it is. They're sort of like you end up. And they're not expensive places. either. And I, I find them more comfortable to hold. Mm. You yeah, know, they're yeah. they're softer Neo, as well. Near Neo premium. Yeah. Yeah. They are nice. And, um, yeah, this was um, obviously a new one with the... Um... Yeah, I'm surprised you got one that quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it didn't do it in moss. My usual colour, if you watch Camilla and I regularly, is moss. But I think this is... Um, I that's know. woodland, I think they call woodland? that. Woodland? Yeah. I think it's woodland, it's yeah, woodland. that's the one I've got. OK. Yeah, so at least I can now tell between the, the two lenses. Numer <laughs> numerous lenses I've got <laughs> which one is, the, uh, is potentially the best. But we'll see. Yeah. So an easy pick out of the bag now. Yeah, it saves your back it, as well, doesn't it? Oh, I can't get over that enough. That's uh, that's the main thing. That's the main reason for purchase. I must admit, and the uh, flexibility when you got the camper van. Yeah. So uh, now I don't want a twelve thousand pound lens left in the camper van, really. And uh, if you're going somewhere like um, Bempton Cliffs or somewhere along those lines. Yeah, I've then, been up uh, there. You want something portable because everybody staggers around, don't they, with their 600s? Yeah, and whatnot, yeah. As big as yeah. lenses they've got because everything, well, some of it's close, I think, but I haven't been. I still haven't been to uh, Bempton Cliffs. Yeah. It's a job for the camper van, but I've failed well, we, to We went up there, a couple of, me, well, me and a couple of friends decided that, let's mm. go to Bempton Cliffs next weekend. Okay, yeah, okay. So we decided to do it on a Sunday. So we arranged, so I, I, I drove up, so I picked them up at three o'clock in the morning. Mm. We got up there by about eight, half past eight in the morning, um, went on the cliffs, took some nice pictures of the gannets, etc. Mm. There wasn't many puffins there. Um, got some great shots and then where we kept walking, we was miles away from the car park and we was near the lighthouse. So there's a few miles. Anyway, we was all tired and shattered. So in the end, I paid for a taxi to get us back to the car park because I just couldn't walk back. And then we drove back the same day and we had to stop about three or four times because I was half asleep. Oh, yeah. um, and we didn't get back till about 11 o'clock that evening. Mm. But it's a fantastic place to go. But if you've got a camper van, then yep. stay the weekend. Mm. Yeah, mm. get some great shots. Yep. No, I definitely, there's uh, one campsite I've been recommended by uh, JP there. And um, yeah, but you still got a book and uh, mm. still got to get in, so popular time of year. There's some um, great viewing ledges, um, mm. they are. Mm. And then we went, as I said, when we went to the lighthouse, we managed to get the sea lions, which were further down. We was quite lucky to get them. Long. But it's a long, you long did, You did have a full day. We had a full <laughs> day, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it was hot. And it was hot. Yeah, very hot. Oh, nice. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, Bempton Cliffs, we will get there, on Camilla and on. But, uh, yeah, not yet. We we'll say I was telling Nick earlier, I'm having trouble getting out with the uh, camper van at the moment. Not through uh, desires there, but the uh, the other, the day job is getting in the way. <laughs> so, uh, that's not a bad to... thing in one respect, I suppose. No, but... no, you can afford lenses like this one. Yeah, that's <laughs> Oh, there's some duck action down here. But, uh, see? Like a bit of action. Use that. Okay. Do you always shoot in auto ISO? Most of um, the time, or? Most of the time, 95% yeah. of the time. Yeah. Only if it's a set situation, which I know the background's not going to change. Yeah, yeah. But this is a classic. I mean, you've got, you know, how are you going to change ISO? You can't. Between yeah. the foreground, the midground, and the sky, you've got three different ISO readings at least here. Yeah. And, um, you know, which ones you pick? So um, the pro tip is um, auto ISO, really. Well, yeah, because um, the conditions are changing all the time, aren't they? When you're looking Constantly. at the foreground where it's in shadow. And now we've got, you throw in the sun element as well today where we've got uh, 
you know, yeah. shade and sunlight in and out of the clouds. Um, you've got a different reading too. So, uh, I mean, some people, well, it's true, the ISO does, is not always set correctly, auto ISO, on a, a quick change of scene. But uh, it's, let's put it this way, it's better than your intuition, basically. So you will It's going to do it quicker than you can, that's for sure. Yeah, you will get, you'll get something, whereas set the wrong ISO, you could get nothing really. You could get a very dark image or you get a very light image, depending on what you set. So, uh, ooh, coot action. Coot's not happy with those tufted ducks. Yeah. Oh, good. Well, thanks for bumping into us today, Nick. No, it was great. Was it's been great to see brilliant. you after no, all this no, time. <laughs> no. So is Nick there? Yeah, he's been here. Anyway, thanks very much for watching an episode of Camilla and I. Hopefully you got something out of this uh, episode with uh, Nick Bridge. Yeah, with me. <laughs> yeah, no, thank you very much. Anyway, cheers, cheers. Bye. Bye.